the Carthaginians originally came from Phoenicia, located on the coast of the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. They founded their city of Carthage as colonists around the 8th century BC. When their capital Tyre fell to the Babylonian king, I dare you to pronounce his name, Carthage became the last great sovereign city of the Phoenicians. And they inherited all remaining colonies on the North African and Iberian coast and some of the Mediterranean islands. Already in the 13th century BC, the Phoenicians began their reputation as renowned and very skilled seafarers. They became rich from trading high value goods like ivory, gold, silver and so on. The Carthaginians proudly followed up on their Phoenician heritage of being traders and skilled seafarers. Carthage was located in modern day Tunisia near the capital Tunis. Carthage had two beautiful harbours, an inner and outer. Her location was excellent for seagoing trade and she prospered. But the wealth and power of Carthage didn't go unrivaled. In the 6th century BC, Carthage came into conflict with the expanding Greeks over possession in Spain, Massalia in present-day France, and crucially in Sicily. The wars lasted 200 years, with Carthage emerging the victor in spite of heavy losses. Massalia and Syracusa remained Greek, but the other areas became Carthaginian or Punic. By the way, Punic is the term used by the Romans to refer to the Carthaginians. It comes from Phoeniches, as the Greeks called them. The rivalry attitude that the Greeks and the Carthaginians had caused the Carthaginians to try and keep all their sea explorations, discoveries and most importantly their trade routes secret. The Carthaginians did spread word about their voyages to England but they told everyone that the English Channel was filled with sea monsters to scare the Greek traders and explorers away. Around 500 BC, Carthage sent out explorers, Hanno and his brother Hamilco, with supposedly 60 ships to explore and colonize the Atlantic coast of Africa. Hanno's exploration of the Atlantic coast of Africa is still however debated as to where exactly Hanno's exploration got him to. Historians consider three places that he could have reached. Historians agree that he at least got as far as Senegal, because his records of his journey stated he found hippos in an estuary of a river he thought to look like the Nile. That river was probably the river Senegal. The second place is Guinea because Hanno's account of his journey mentioned a large mountain and Guinea's 890 meter Mount Kakulima could fit his description. However, some historians say his description of the mountain better fits Mount Cameroon, which is 4040 meters, so it would be more notable to put it in his records if he saw this mountain. That the Carthaginians traded with the native population of Sub-Sahara Africa is shown in the accounts of the Greek historian Herodotus. I will now quote his account on how the Carthaginians exactly did their trade with these native peoples. Quote, the Carthaginians tell us that they trade with a race of men who live in a part of Libya beyond the pillars of Heracles. On reaching this country, they unload their goods, arrange them tidily along the beach and then returning to their boats, raise a smoke. Seeing the smoke, the natives come down to the beach, place on the ground a certain quantity of gold in exchange for the goods and go off again to a distance. The Carthaginians then come ashore and take a look at the gold. And if they think it presents a fair price for their wares, they collect it and go away. If on the other hand, it seems too little, they go back aboard and wait and the natives come and add to the gold until they are satisfied. There is perfect honesty on both sides, 
the Carthaginians never touch the gold until it equals in value what they have offered for sale. And the natives never touch the goods until the gold has been taken away. So the fact that the Carthaginians were able to sail to the West African coast and return safely made historians think they could have gone much further than previously thought. There is an even more interesting account from Pliny the Elder, who was a Roman author, naturalist and natural philosopher. His account stated that Hanno actually managed to circumnavigate the African continent, all the way from Gades, which is now modern-day Cadiz, to Arabia. Recently, tests were run on ancient Egyptian mummies that came up with astounding results. Evidence of their use of cocaine and nicotine showed up in spite of the fact these are New World products. Also according to accepted history, China was not known to the West until the Roman Empire. Yet genuine silk threads have been found on ancient Egyptian mummies too, proving that contact was more far-reaching and far older than previously thought. The Phoenicians were known to navigate by the stars, and in fact the Romans called the North Star the Punic Star, because of its use by the Phoenicians for navigation, but the Romans did not understand how it all worked. Another navigation tool called the Gnomon was used to determine the latitude by the position of the sun. A Greek sea captain from Massalia named Petaeus learned the use of it and used it in his explorations of the Atlantic coast of Europe. Another navigational instrument which probably was in use by Phoenicians was the cross staff. A long sighting staff with uprights set at various spots which allowed the user to determine latitude as well as direction. Furthermore, some instinctive oceanic navigation skills was very probable among these sailors, similar to the unerring way Polynesians could find their way to tiny specks of land in the vast expanse of the Pacific simply by observing formations of clouds, the flights of birds and even the way waves form far from land. A short passage from the Greek book Argonautica described the man who was to be the navigator for the fictional voyage as follows, quote, Typhus, son of Hagnaeus, left the Scythian people of the Thespians, well skilled to foretell the rising wave on the broad sea, and well skilled to infer from sun and star the stormy winds and the time for sailing. The islands of the Canaries located off the coast of northwestern Africa have stone ruins, the most imposing being a number of stepped pyramidal structures located right in the middle of a town. Farther out in the Atlantic, the Azores have turned up with a hoard of Carthaginian coins, a statue of the Horse of Carthage and a number of pottery fragments that could be Punic. Along the Atlantic seaboard of the Americas, a number of stone monuments have been found, usually inscribed in Punic and many have the name of Hanno. Oddly, in northeastern Pennsylvania, near the town of Hawley, one of these stone monuments was found, inscribed in Punic, which stated, This monument, placed by Hanno, do not devise. Even some universities are now saying that the Phoenician seafarers may have been trafficking the entire coast of Africa and the coast of India, as early as 1500 to 1200 BC. The alphabets of India, Ceylon and Sumatra all originated from Phoenician. This could again be evidence of far-ranging contact. Inscriptions on stone are found throughout the Americas and coins of Carthage have been found in a number of states. Nearly all have been found close to navigatable waters and oddly all are of the earliest issues of Carthage. None later than the first Punic War have turned up. Even a metal urn with Phoenician themes and likely a Carthaginian trade item was unearthed near the junction of the Shenango and Susquehanna rivers in New York. When divers went to investigate the odd stone formation of Bimini Island near Florida, they found a shipwreck that dated to the 1800s. While searching they found that it lay atop an older shipwreck one that is positively Phoenician and dates to approximately 1000 BC. 
Dr. J. Manson Valentine of Yale University confirmed the origins of the wreck. Let me know what you think about this evidence in the comments below and if you think that Phoenicians really reached as far as the Americas. And don't forget to subscribe for more history related videos.